In this example, we have another scenario where even though we have a product, the product rule is not the easiest way to go. And so I'm not going to use a product rule for this problem. I'm going to rewrite the derivative as d dx of v squared times 2v to the 1 half plus 1. And actually, before we even take a derivative, why don't we actually just do the algebraic manipulation first, and we'll come back and put the derivative notation in there. So I'm first going to just distribute this. So I'm going to get 2v. Uh, when you take uh, v squared times v to the 1 half, you get v to the 5 halves, plus v squared times 1, which would just be v squared. So this is just the rewrite of the original. Now I'm going to take the derivative of that. d dx of 2v to the 5 halves plus v squared will equal 5 halves times 2v to the 5 halves minus 1 or 5 halves minus 2 halves would be 3 halves plus the derivative of v squared which is 2v. We'll simplify this. We get 5v to the 3 halves plus 2v. Let's come down and look at another problem where you have to use the product rule. So I've got x squared times 3 e to the 3x. This first function we can call our f, the second function would be our g. So we're going to have first times derivative of the second, so x squared times the derivative of e to the 3x, which we have a little shortcut. The derivative of e to the 3x is going to be 3e to the 3x. So first times derivative of the second plus second times the derivative of the first. So the derivative of x squared is 2x. I'd like to simplify this a little bit. 3x squared e to the 3x plus 2x e to the 3x. Now this is the this is the derivative, but often we're going to have to factor and say set an expression equal to 0, try to find the x-intercepts, things like that. And so it's really good practice now to factor your answer. So let's factor out a common factor. We can take out an x we can take out an e to the 3x and this leaves us with 3x plus 2. So I'd like you to pause the video and I'd like you to um, try these two practice problems and on practice problem 2 I would like you to factor your, uh, factor your answers. I'm asking you to find the first derivative and then find the second derivative and factor your answers. Okay, the first problem, I've got 4e to the t, there was a hint here. Let the 4 with the et, e to the t, equal the first function and let the square root of t equal your second. Also, um, writing t to the 1 half is sometimes easier than taking the derivative of the square root of t. So f prime of t f prime of t will equal the first, which is 4 e to the t, times the derivative of t to the 1 half, which is 1 half t to the negative 1 half plus the second, which is t to the 1 half, times the derivative of the first, which is 4 e to the t. Let's try to tidy this up a little bit. I'm going to have 2 e to the t times t to the negative 1 half plus 4 e to the t times t to the 1 half. And so, although this is one form of your answer, I'm going to factor out what I can. I'm going to factor out a 2, I'm going to factor out an e to the t, and I'm actually going to factor out an, a t to the negative 1 half. 
You may not be used to this, but I'll, I'll, we'll probably do enough of these that this will make should make some sense to you. If I factor out the t to the negative one half, well, my first term inside is going to be one. The second term is going to be two. And then you ask yourself, what do you have to multiply t to the negative one half by to give you t to the one half? And the answer would be just t, right? Because t times t to the negative one half that would be two halves minus one half would be t to the one half. So factoring out a t to the one half gives you this nice little algebraic expression in here that if we were asked to find uh, the zeros of this function it would be much easier than if we left it in this form right here. Alright, let's look at the second example, the second problem. We have to find the first derivative we'll use the product rule first times derivative of the second. So the first is x. The derivative of the second is e to the x. Plus second times the derivative of the first, which is 1. And so I can rewrite this as e to the x. If I factor out an e to the x, I get x plus 1. There's my first derivative. My second derivative, I'm going to take the derivative of the first derivative, right? So this would be my first and the x plus 1 would be my second function in the product. So I have first, which is e to the x, times the derivative of the second. The derivative of the second is 1 plus the second, which is x plus 1, times derivative of the first, which is e to the x. I'm going to simplify this, e to the x, plus x e to the x plus e to the x. I can combine like terms giving me 2 e to the x plus x e to the x. And so in the end, the second derivative, if I factor out an e to the x, inside my parentheses I get 2 plus x or x plus 2. So this is my s second derivative. So first derivative, second derivative. In the last example, the last example is just d dx of 5 e to the 3x. Remember that you're allowed to take a constant outside of a derivative. So d dx of 5 e to the x is 5 times d dx of e to the 3x. And we know d dx of e to the 3x is 3 e to the 3x. So this would equal 15 e to the 3x. All right, let's look at the next let's look at the next problem. And this is a, a different notation. The product rule is still the same, but using using a slightly different notation. So if you have the derivative of u times v, it would be u of x times v prime of x plus v of x times u prime of x. It's still first times derivative of the second plus second times derivative of the first or just leaving the x's out of it in a real a real short would be just the derivative of u times v equals u v prime plus v u prime. It's still first times derivative of the second plus second times derivative of the first. And so the first one here it says working with numerical derivatives. So here we have a scenario where you're not given the actual function, just like we had done um, in a prior lesson where I asked you to find the equation of the tangent line and I just gave you some notation. You know, f of 2 equals 5 and f prime of 2 equals 10 or something like that. So same idea. We start with our function y equals uv. Uh, this can also be y equals u of x times v of x. Right? So if this is the case, that means that y prime would equal the first u of x times derivative of the second plus the second, which is v of x, times derivative of the first, u prime of x. But we want y prime of 2. Right? So we'd want u of 2, v prime of 2, plus v of 2, 
u prime of 2. And we're just going to substitute the values we have. So u of 2 is 3. v prime of 2 is 2. v of 2 is 1. And u prime of 2 is negative 4. So we'd end up with 6 minus 4, or 2. So at this point, I'd like you to pause the video and try to, um, try to do the next derivative in the practice problem. We want to find y prime of 2 if y equals 2uv plus v, which means I'm going to have to not only use the product rule, but I'm also going to have to use the sum rule. So I start by y writing y prime, and I take the, f the derivative of this first, which would be 2u times v prime plus v times 2u prime. Then I want to take the derivative of v, and the derivative of v with respect to x is just v prime, or v prime of x. And since I want y prime of 2, then I would have 2u of 2 times v prime of 2 plus v of 2 times 2u prime of 2 plus v prime of 2. And we'll come up here and get our values from the from the prior problem. So I'm going to have 2 times u of 2, and u of 2 is 3, times v prime of 2, and v prime of 2 is 2, plus v of 2, and so v of 2 is 1, times 2, u prime of 2, and u prime of 2 is negative 4, plus v prime of 2. And